All right. So the rain has been coming down, has it not? There's been flooding everywhere. Um, people are saying that, oh, if only things were not built here, if they were not built in this manner, if we didn't have proper uh, drainage, if the sewage systems were not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if this and this and this had not been done in this way, or if it had been done in the other way, um, then perhaps we would not be seeing the issues that we are seeing today. Well, is it speculation? Or is it actually true that if those things that we say were actually the case, then we would not see the wanton destruction that we are experiencing today? Those are questions we must ask them. Um, at this hour, two guests in the studio, they're engineers. They're the people we say solutions. That they give us solutions for many things. Engineer Jane Mutulili is the chairperson of the Association of Consulting Engineers of Kenya. Jane, good morning. Good morning. How are you, Karibu Sana? Thank you very much. Welcome to the hot seat of Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you. Also, engineer Francis Karimi is a registered water professional and lead expert in environmental assessment and audit. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Situation Room. We're going to be talking about solutions this morning and asking ourselves the question, what can actually be done? But before we get into it, let's welcome you properly. Um, CT gives us proverbs every day and he goes to a different African country every week and he'll tell you where he's gone this week and then he'll tell you the proverb as well and then you can tell us what they mean to you. Does that sound fair? Okay. Okay. Uh, the whole of this week we've been in the Republic of Congo, not to be confused with DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is Congo Brazzaville. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it borders the Atlantic Ocean, believe it or not. <coughs> Uh, the proverb for today is of particular interest because a song was sang uh, that was reminiscent of this particular proverb by a gentle gentleman called Samba Mapangala. For those, aha, uh -huh, I mm. see the nodding, <laughs> it means someone, yes, uh, is attuned to what I am saying. The song was Vunja Mifupa Kama Meno Bado Iko, okay? Mm -hmm. Do ask me to sing it in the morning and I told her, I cannot, I am a horrible, terrible singer. I don't have a voice for singing. Anyway, the proverb from whence this particular song was derived is, while you have teeth, you can break bones. Mm. Okay? The song was, of course, Vunja Mifupa Kama Meno Bado Iko. Ah, I see. <laughs> uh, do, uh, are you seeing how uh, every guest we have is resonating with this? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> they, they know the song. Clearly. <laughs> some, some probably would dance to the song. I think uh, yes. Engineer Francis was already dancing. <laughs> <laughs> in his seat. <laughs> yeah. But the question now is, what do you think of the proverb? Yeah. While you have teeth, you can break bones. Your opinion and your interpretation of it. Yeah, it shows that uh, when you are, maybe well, when you have this, the strength, when you have the capacity. Yes. Uh, like now when you are young, mm. yes. you, you, you eat the hard meat. <laughs> because when you get old, you'll not be in a position to you just be eating the soft meat. So take the maximum uh, advantage uh, when, when the resources are there and yes. when the capacity is there and when you are capable of doing something. Mm. Very well put. And that is why we have come here because this is the time we have the capacity, this is the time I have the strength to tell the world and the nation that this is the situation mm. we need to so solve it now. Okay. Mm. Mm. What about you, Engineer Jane? Uh, thank you very much. That's actually one of my, when I was younger, one of my favorite songs. <laughs> and the way I think about it is, uh, there's a time for everything. Mm -hmm. At that particular point, you could do this, you could do that. It comes a point when you don't, you, even if you could, you can't. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a, when you have the time, when you have the capacity and ability, do the best you can. Mm -hmm. There will come a point at which, even if you wanted to do it. And I keep on, my mom keeps on telling me the same. Mm. that uh, when you have the time work, don't worry about what you're not doing. Just do what it is you can at that point because like she tells me, like I am right now, even if I wanted to do what I can't. Mm. So I think it's just to do what you can when you can. Indeed. Do what you can when you can. I think that's great. So I think that's also a very interesting statement because right now we're dealing with a major issue and it's not just in one place in the country. It is around the country. So long as the rains keep coming down in the measure in which they're coming, we're seeing huge, huge destruction. The deluge is almost unbelievable and uh, people who've had to leave their homes are rising in number by the day. Right. So let's look at this. 
current rains, floods, the drainage system. And I'm just going to start from that point, the last part, the drainage system, like, and I guess for both of you, that m most of this uh, has been blamed on a poor or improper drainage system. Uh, we saw a video yesterday of a young man in an estate, and all he did is he went to the little thing with the rails, and he just took a rake, and he got rid of the garbage, I'm and in an hour, the water was gone. So is it that uh, we have garbage clogging drainage systems? Is it that the drainage systems are poorly uh, done? Is it that we are building in areas where we should not be building? Let's give an overview of the situation right now. Can we do that from your perspective and then we can get into the nitty gritty? Yeah. Uh, can I? Yes, please, Jane. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Mm. First of all, let me start by saying that we have all seen and fallen short of the glory of God. <laughs> a lot of what we are seeing right now, there's a drainage aspect of it, there's everything else. But even us as people, mm -hmm. what are we doing? Mm -hmm. And I want to give like that example you've just given. Mm -hmm. I know where I live, just behind us there's a river. Mm -hmm. And what has happened is somebody has actually put spikes, you know, grill, grill on the river mm -hmm. to protect thieves from getting into his compound or something like that. Right. What happens when it rains? The debris upstream comes and blocks there and we it accumulates there and we actually form a dam and that dam now flows back and gets into a compound mm. so i mean really what kind of drainage should an engineer have done to do that mm. so we are we are doing we are taking uh public we are solving public problems using private uh, means mm. which is not right because that's what I'm saying. You shouldn't block a river mm. to protect yourself. That uh, and uh, but, but, so but, even but as we talk about the drainage, <laughs> we also are not doing enough. Mm. But engineer, you know, as you say it, and you state the problem, the solution seems obvious. It's a pity that you are that person's neighbor. You know why? You are an engineer, and it tells me that neighborhood of yours. How do you people get along? I mean, don't you have neighborhood committees where people say it, mm -hmm. talk? agree on what should be done so that you can collate all the expertise within that community and utilize it for the common good to be fair on my neighborhood we are fine mm. that person is behind us there's a river mm. so it's the person who divides the river between us and the river on the other side yes and you you see it's not it doesn't have to happen just where i am for as long as you block a river downstream yes. the effect mm. is felt upstream yes. okay yes. so that's what i'm saying yes. Yes. Mm. if i can take over on that mm. yeah. basically you see a flooding we first of all have, have to define what is flooding. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that is actually uh, overflowing of water, uh, submerging an area which is usually dry. Mm. Uh, cause of flooding, uh, you could be the victim of flooding because somebody has created some situation upstream. So you'll be feeling the effects of flooding. Like now, if you look at the, uh, the flooding in the Tana River, it's flooding because somebody has constructed some mm, facilities, yeah. uh, power generation upstream. dams and all that, upstream. And when the water is released, sometimes uh, without considering the downstream mm -hmm. um, population, you find they are affected. Uh, as she was explaining, somebody has just blocked, for security reasons, the river channel. Uh, so the debris will correct there and block and then flooding will be caused upstream of that mm. so uh, Basically what is happening? I can see you came hitting the ground <laughs> What has happened you have said that people are constructing the drains are uh, being blocked and we are flooding mm. It is far than that. Okay. There are so many factors which will be causing the flooding. Either a storm, uh, uh, well, naturally it has happened, a storm has come, the rain has, uh, it's more than what the ground can take. Uh, the river channels which have naturally been taking flood waters all along, um, even before you did the development, because flooding has been there, even before this development was done. Mm -hmm. uh, because nature has been having its time. Why? Uh, oh, the catchment char characteristics, like upstream, of what is happening around, uh, has been uh, disturbed. You have not done any development in Nairobi, but you have already disturbed the, uh, the Gong forest catchment. 
Uh, so floods will still come down and you, you have be having water that can be taken by the infrastructure which is available even before you do the development of the estates and such things. What has happened in Nairobi and Nairobi has become a serious uh, case is that there has been very uh, rampant development mm -hmm. which is not controlled. Mm -hmm. Uh, there have been politics, uh, people settling everywhere within the yep. flood plains, mm -hmm. and uh, with, with, in total disregard of whether it's a flood plain or not, they require shelter. Mm -hmm. You cannot blame them. They are ignorant. What they require to be uh, actually trained on is the kind of risks they are exposing themselves uh, to. So can yeah. I can uh, I interject yes, to the question there? Uh, maybe you can also take that on, Jane. Is that we're saying? So if you're in a waterway or a natural water pathway. Or if you're in flood plains, should the overarching principle not be that there should not be any kind of development in such an area? That yes. that is actually the policy. Okay. And that policy is such that within a certain flood plain, only certain activities should take place. For example, agriculture. There should not be permanent buildings on that. But unfortunately, what has happened is um. And uh, sorry, I, I said I'll deal on the social aspect of flooding because that's he'll take the more technical one, mm. although I'll still allude to that. It's when we are selling plots, for mm. example, right now, nobody will go and show you a plot within <laughs> what do you call those areas, <laughs> you know, those flood, <laughs> uh, they are called <laughs> plots, flood 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 yeah. and because right now they are not accessible. Mm. But during the dry season, it is also good. You've seen what is happening in the river, mm. beautiful houses mm -hmm. that have that were built probably three four years ago mm -hmm. it has not flooded the way it has so the assumption is that uh, that is not a flood uh, mm. it's, it's not a flood plain but it is and the planning should be and i get very disappointed when i see that we are trying to flout the policies because we can within a certain riparian it shouldn't be nothing should happen there within the next flood plain because we have the riparian and then we have the flood plains nothing permanent should be there and even you as a person you're going to buy that property mm. what 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 kind of investigation what kind of assessment are you doing mm. you know you find somebody's buying upstream it's probably seven million downstream they'll give you a concession they'll sell probably five five point five million and you're saying the rest of that you know that that difference is because you will take care you can take care of the of the ring water water goes where water does mm. and uh, there's nothing much anybody can do about that so it is actually those policies that are broken, that should be broken, that is what is healing us. And before I finish on that, mm -hmm. eh, also, Nairobi has become, uh, initially, as he said, it floods. Uh, this is not the first thing that we are having, but it's probably getting worse as time goes by. Because the pavement, initially, when you have green spaces within an area, it absorbs some, some uh, water. So that the water that is now flowing into the water causeways is actually not that much. Now, it comes in a flood, even from where, when it rains, all the water just goes. There's no perforation, there's nothing. Mm. Percolation, there's nothing like that. Mm. So that's that's normally a problem. From yeah. a more technical point of view, uh, Francis, what are we talking about here? You mentioned the developments that we're seeing around Nairobi. We use Nairobi as an example, and I think we all know the different areas where we've seen these developments come up. What is happening whereby now there was no development and then now there's development and then the rain comes and I wake up in the morning and there's water in my house. Me yeah. who lives maybe 200, 300 meters from such said development. What exactly is happening? Yeah, there? now you see uh, flood generation uh, is actually uh, 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 controlled by the catchment area. Yeah. If the lad is uh, not taking uh, absorbing so much water, that water will, will be a runoff and it will cause havoc downstream. Mm -hmm. What has been happening before the uh, Nairobi was green in most of the areas mm -hmm. and uh, uh, most of the rainwater was actually percolating into the ground and very little was going uh, downstream to the rivers. What has happened is once you concrete that area, we, we, I don't want to go to the detailed technical term, terminologies. You see, as, uh, as you continue uh, making it hard, uh, most of the runoff will con you continue making it soft, most of the water will be ob absorbed. Mm -hmm. So what has happened, most of the, the cover, the concrete cover in Nairobi has increased has tremendously. Uh, tremendously and suddenly. And all that water is now going to the uh, drains and the rivers. The rivers will eventually take that water. But the drains, 
which are uh, taking that water to the river do not have the capacity. So as you do that development, the development control department must ensure that you also review the sizes of the drains which are actually carrying that water to the natural water courses. You also have, uh, and th this one, it means that you look to, you have to do some master planning in uh, drainage development so that if you are allowing development of high-rise uh, buildings covering a certain area, you have to know that uh, the flood will be taken, the drains have the capacity to take all that water which is going to be generated yeah. because all the rainwater now will be 90 percent <laughs> going to the river. For before, before, before it was 30 percent, yeah. 70 percent was being absorbed on the ground. For every development there's an engineer. Yes. There is. There is. There is an engineer. In fact, we see those, you know, we see those swanky boards and everything. There's an engineer, there's a contractor, there's a site, this, that, the other thing. So the engineer then essentially is the one who should be advising on some of these things. So the assumption is that, uh, okay, let's just assume that people don't know. That the person who is uh, developing here is not aware that, you know, if I'm going to um, develop, then I need um, extra in terms um, of drainage uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm perhaps being naive here but it, it to me who is not an engineer for anybody who is watching or, he, or listening it is an assumption that somebody who is working on a development would know this and would apply this but from what we are seeing and hearing that this has not been applied and the uh, city is underwater yes well, well, maybe I could, uh, first of all respond to that you see we require an, inter an integrated approach mm. there are so many players in the development of a city. We have got the city planning department, we have got the uh, community itself, we have got the business people mm -hmm. who are selling land, uh, as she is saying. Mm -hmm. So many people, what we require is strict adherence to standards and uh, uh, actually educating the society mm. of what it would be for. Because everybody thinks that by throwing garbage into the uh, side drain, mm. it, it does not it affect as long as it is away from his mm. house. But then it is affecting somebody else. Yeah. Uh, every good housekeeping has to be instructed from now. And everybody should be told that we have to keep the city clean. Otherwise, once you uh, obstruct the drainage channels, uh, the whole thing will be in a mess, and all of us are going to be affected. And so, if you sorry. sink, uh, if, if you if you see if you want to sink the boat, you just p uh, punch it. It will not matter who has punched mm. the boat, but you are all going to sink. We are all sinking like fools mm. when we have got experts. Somebody yesterday asked, why should we be having this problem when we have got experts exactly. uh, in, the, um, in this sector? Yeah. And we, are, we have the experts, we are the experts, but the, the, this uh, more to it. Uh, I'll tell you, I know you are waiting to see I what, to what has that uh, more is uh, this one. Yes. Is that there are so many players and uh, so many factors have to be considered, some of them let which are beyond. Mm. Uh, let me also add my like, voice to that. Eh? Mm. Yeah. In an I wanted to say a normal society. In a decent society, mm -hmm. what happens, uh, development follows infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So you first of all have the infrastructure, and then you decide you have a road that can assess this place, eh? and therefore you can put a certain um, number of people, dwelling spaces in that. Mm -hmm. You have this kind of drainage, and therefore you can actually empty more water into that. You have a certain size of sewer, then you can do that. What happens, unfortunately, and very, very unfortunate, especially in Nairobi, we first of all put up a high-rise building, and then we start asking ourselves, where will the water go? How will the assessment be? And that has happened. Kilalesho, look at Kilalesho. Mm. We, it's, I don't even know what to call it, because what has happened is that, look at South Sea, let's not even go to Kilalesho, look at South Sea. It's just become, I don't yeah. even know what to call it. Because uh, the infrastructure... Please. No, let me not use that. It's not politically correct. <laughs> but <laughs> the infrastructure that is there, that has been there since I don't know which years, mm. is the one that has taken how many more buildings there. We used to have, I think, single dwelling units mm. within a certain plot. Yes, right yes. now, we are selling them, we are amalgamating them, and then we are putting up 15 uh, high-rise buildings. 
ha- having so many people. So in How these terms, when that? we're looking at 30 years ago, if you had 100 single dwelling units uh, with a drainage system, which worked because it okay, rained then. Absolutely it worked. rained then, it did it not? Then. There and heavy rain, now. okay. Yes. Uh, so we're saying that that same drainage, and that's just one part of the system, is still the same drainage that is Pre- holding all of these other high-rise buildings that are coming up all over the place. Precisely. What do you expect? Precisely. And who, who should be you see you as an engineer, as I sit you where I am, eh, mm. I can only plan a certain plan. That's why we have the county, the county, so that the county plans for all of us. And if we indeed we decide to dissolve some areas, eh, which is fine, can we prepare the infrastructure to take care of that? The developers, eh, actually what used to happen before is that the developer takes care of the infrastructure for his new development. You can't inconvenience your neighbor because you've decided to go high, high level. But I'm going to have to ask yes, at ask. this point. Every time we sit and we talk about different uh, paths and solutions, we know that engineering is a what? Is a profession of solutions, right? So I have to ask the question. Authorities in government, and in this time, at this point, we're talking about counties. It can't run away from that because the planning of a city has everything to do with the county government of the day. Absolutely. Right? Do these two entities talk to each other? I have to ask because I don't understand why we would have such a bad situation whereby buildings are still coming up, approvals are being given hotter than bread gets off of the oven in the bakery. Yes. Don't, yes. don't we have communication between <laughs> the, yeah. the two uh, entities? Yes, and if have, not, why? Yes, excuse me. We, we've been seeing that. And actually our proposals have been, actually my proposal, which I've been talking, I've been talking uh, about it for some time now, we require a, 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 need, a more t- task uh, team, um, which is going to be advising the government. We have got uh, Ministry of uh, Water, Ministry, uh, Ministry of Roads, Infrastructure, all that. They operate independently, and the only time they come together maybe is when there is a cabinet meeting which is not guided by some technical experts. Maybe, and what we would say is that we have a number of uh, government which is actually coordinating all these infrastructure uh, units uh, so that when a decision is made, like the city planning, when you find th- uh, some high-rise buildings are coming up, the city planning, the city planner, or the city authorities are the ones in charge. Nobody has, the act does not allow maybe a road engineer to go and ask the the city planner Mm. why are you approving this when my road will not take care of this kind of so um, you'll just build your road and you continue build your road? because you've been given the contract even, yeah, though build, to, even though there's going to be some potential danger in the future yeah you you, you come you plan your road uh, you say the drain which is going to take the water which is coming from this catchment is this amount then the city planner goes and uh, gives an approval for a different thing for a, before uh, other than what you're actually planning for for that road <laughs> yes so, so it becomes you, it's not that you do a road f- to f- that is actually not adequate you do a road that is adequate for what you're doing but a few i, I just want to respond to that eh? when the current uh, county government of uh, nairobi came in they appointed experts into the planning approval committees i was there mm-hmm. i remember i was with dr gichuki and a few other people and we, we, we served in that committee for one year. I don't know how much we did because, anyway, I know at the end of the year we, were, we are no longer in that committee. But I also don't feel like, even when we were put there, I don't think we were effective. Because what you are trying to ask is, we want us to approve this. Eh? What, is the, what is the supporting infrastructure for this, for this development that you are doing? That was never answered. So that's what I'm saying. It's not that they're not there. In theory, they're there. So what got us into this mess in the first place? Do I hear a resounding um, non-adherence to quality standards or requirements? Irresponsibility. They're just being irresponsible. Recklessness by the society and everybody else. And um, lack of uh, concern by those ones who should uh, actually should be concerned of the situation as it is. Like now, the situation is so uh, dangerous, so uh, uh, actually delicate Dying. at the moment. Mm. 
But you can see, we are the ones who are coming now, we are the ones who are coming to say, can we come and talk to the nation and tell them that this is a problem and if you don't uh, uh, be careful, if you, uh, if you are careless, uh, what things are going to happen in the future? Yeah. Yesterday there was a, uh, an emergency uh, committee which was formed by, his by the National, president. National Flood Emergency Multi Agency. Y yes, uh, you see, it's coming Response. when uh, now the situation is so, uh, so 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 bad. We require to have these committees always on standby yes. with experts mm -hmm. who are warning and who are giving advice, and that advice is taken and implemented seriously. We, the, the technocrats or the experts have been sidelined by the society through political manipulation. Sidelined how? Side what are we, what are we saying? Sorry, if I can just ask that question. Because, again, if we're talking about a profession of solutions all the time, realizing that this is an issue, and we do have a lot of these experts on these boards, on these bodies that are supposed to be giving advice, like we said, in any development, it doesn't matter if you are... Uh, working on a cattle dip. There will be an engineer whose name has been emblazoned on the thing. My question is, do we hear speaking up? Do we hear the raising of voices when things are going bad? Not now, when they've gone belly up. Yes. When yes. things are actually being planned and we can see that there is an issue, do we hear the voices in so adequate a manner that either a development will be stopped or at the very least things will be amended or altered. Yeah, exactly. What we are saying is that the society may not have a lot of time or co concentrating in listening to what the experts are saying. Mm -hmm. They would have more time to listen to the politicians uh, when they are being told we are coming to give you lard so that we are going to develop, to settle here and that kind of a thing. People who are coming to assist them. To, so information, ignorance is leading us to that. Because when they come and tell you we are going to settle you here, first of all, there should be a committee to come and ask, have you considered this? Can you consider that? Mm -hmm. But when these are decrees which are just made by the politicians, we, ourselves as engineers, we shall be coming and when we come and tell you where you are being settled is a flat plain. It's going to cause a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. they, will see, they will tell you, let us have the problem. Uh, let us get settled. When the problem comes, we shall address it. In all then the, it is suddenly it comes. And it has come. You look, all the world, river valleys have been occupied through settlement of people who have been uh, migrated from uh, one region, telling them they are occupying somebody's plot in town. Now you are taken to Kibagare in Kayole, and they, we have got the whole valley settled with thousands of people. In all our developments, we have what we call environmental ESI, environmental and social uh, impact assessment. And in every of that in every development that's actually a requirement by law mm -hmm. and we do that and it's approved by NEMA after the assessment you also give mitigation measures are those mitigation measures taken are they that's exactly the question they're not mm -hmm. and because the mitigation is is actually it's not an immediate thing it's actually it's a faced. continuous it's faced so are we doing that that's number one number two who is listening? I mean, we, we, because that is done by the experts. If you don't follow what the expert is telling you and you go ahead and do what, as he's saying, is politically correct, eh? what, sometimes you sit and ask uh, yourself, which is a very bad question, eh? what can I do? Uh, uh, exactly. If the doctor comes and tells you, we're well, prescribing this drug for you, and this is and what you're you going to take, take it. then you decide to throw away and get a cheaper thing for your convenience, when the death strikes or the disease strikes again, then you will not come back to the doctor and you tell him, doctor, you, you, you are not doing your work. The experts have uh, actually done their work. And you see, for a drain, to come up with that size of a drain, there's a lot of there's calculations, a lot of, a lot of uh, research carried out. Mm -hmm. Before you say, my drain is going to be two meters uh, wide, uh, three meters And by the way, like we look at the, that catchment of that drain reasonable future expansions of the catchment area and we also look at the, the oh, it's got the 100 year um uh, what yeah, is it called? Return, uh, return return the rain you know what in the 100 years uh, which is the worst rain that can happen mm. after you've done all that then you say your dream after you says your dream or whatever infrastructure you're doing eh, something comes and happens and what you thought you knew does not happen okay. something else more than triples 
Okay. Uh, on your catchment. Uh, at the same time, we recommended in 1997-98 uh, when we were doing the Nairobi Master Plan for Drainage and Sewage, we made some recommendations of how the implementation of these programs will be done. Sometimes you find that it was not done for one reason or the other, fighting or something like that. Okay, yeah. let's ask this question. We're looking at uh, one problem right now, that there's what, a lot of water. That's the problem. But we can see different manifestations of yeah, it. Absolutely. All right? Absolutely. Uh, let's look at what's happening to the east of the city, uh, going out towards uh, Machakos. Machakos. Okay. The estates that have been completed about a year ago, about two years ago, where before that, like we said, where the rain in the country was not so much. So, yeah, it was dry. You wouldn't really know that you were in that area. What would be the cause of this particular flooding we're seeing in an area now where houses have been put up and now they've been flooded in what would be the cause of that but i said this particular one but i said eh, when you're doing that design and that planning eh, you look at a hundred year plan mm -hmm. i don't think this is the first time this is happening in the hundred years we are talking about mm -hmm. so in in that 100 years eh, that's actually what you should be looking at within that 100 years eh, or whatever time that happened eh, we didn't have that kind of rains probably within the last probably five years when these buildings were being put up mm -hmm. but the planners know and whoever did that planning eh, they should actually get historical whoever was doing the the design for them, they should actually get historical and decide up to this point, this shouldn't happen. Because when you block, it's really common sense, when you block a causeway, mm -hmm. what do you want the water to do? Where do you expect the water, water to go? Water just as it should. Mother Nature will find Mother, its, me, ma, it will find its path. Mother, so, it should, strikes back. So That's very simply, doing. that estate, as an example, it should not have place. been built there. It is absolutely, and don't, the, people should stop assuming mm. they can tame water. Water is the one thing that you can't tame. Mm. And if you are taming water, the expense of taming that water, that's what I'm saying, they'll sell you a plot. Probably 20 meters above you, you know, higher ground, eh? it's at 7 million. And I'm talking about a specific area I know in Kiambu. Seven, uh, seven, 20 kilometers, I mean 20 meters up. Those plots were 7.9 million. Mm -hmm. Just down the valley, it's at 5.5 .5 million. They should not be allowed to sell those, that property. They should not be allowed to sell. And two point, that two million is not adequate to compensate you, even you as a buyer. Mm. Please just be knowing when the difference is that, you know when the deal is too good. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Uh, yeah. and, and what you have said about the uh, Mombasa Road uh, development, you see, we have got a floodplain, um, the Adi floodplain mm -hmm. down there. Yeah. Uh, if they wanted to do that kind of development and they wanted to invest, actually, either the local authority should come up with a line the channel. Uh, yes. You come and exactly. now improve the river channels because we have had Can development everywhere. Mm -hmm. Make it wider, make it uh, deeper, line it with concrete so that whatever, what, uh, even if there is a storm, that was she is saying, flows. the water will be evacuated very, very fast without actually overflowing mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the adjacent uh, um, estates. So the people who sell, the people who develop, the county okay. authorities who give approvals for all of these developments to happen, have a case to answer. Yes, uh, that is correct. Unfortunately, and I say this with a lot of reservation, we as professionals, eh, I don't think we are. I don't think we are innocent, because by the time you are going to help somebody develop that property there, you have you have the knowledge. You know, they may be ignorant. You have the knowledge that whatever it is you are taking them, whatever it is you are giving them, eh, is actually not the right place. So even as the professionals, the planners, the architects, the engineers, I don't think we are innocent. You can't be because um, every time there is a building, respective of where it is, there is always an indication that professionals have been involved in that process. Whether they are uh, professionals who work for the county government or whether they are professionals who are consultants. You see, the question that always gets asked, or at least gets pondered on is, why do they allow this and they know full well or is it that they do not allow it but they are countermanded somebody decides that irrespective of what they are told they are simply going to go their merry way yeah we have a problem in this uh, society and uh, as i've said we have to have a very very strong uh, executive which is actually going to accept and uh, implement whatever the experts have actually specified and advised. 
So we require to be supported. What we say, this should not happen. Now the, the executive should be advised correctly, and I believe they are those uh, units which are supposed to be that with technical experts. Like now, when we have a technical committee, mm. which is going to be looking at the whole of the infrastructure in the country, coordinating power, coordinating and, uh, uh, farming, coordinating methods of agriculture, coordinating uh, uh, all, 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 all these road uh, transport, development all that that committee should be there to advise the executive that this is what should be happening and they should be alerting and advising when this organization is going this way we feel there will be a problem later hmm. Kenya power is coming to uh, develop uh, or put its poles on uh, inside the road reserve when the road engineer comes to develop the road he finds that uh, already there is because it was not the Kenya Power came uh, irrespective of the they came and d did their part they said they've done and they've gone you tell them to remove that they say you have to pay so much it's total ignorance but let me let me also respond to you what you're saying why we are doing that you know which is um those buildings have not fallen has Janguka they are still standing when sometimes unfortunately when you see somebody's hell bent on doing something eh? You, you assist them. So an engineer, much as you know, or an architect for that matter, much as you know this is going to be disaster, this person has gotten this and they actually insist. And you've given them all um, risks. They're still going to put up a house. You have two choices. You could let him put up his house that will fall on its own, or you could actually assist him put up a reasonable house. That will not fall. That will not fall. The disaster of, of the flood and everything is coming, mm -hmm. that now will be his. So we, as you're doing, you're doing actually your professional work. Probably what you're not doing is, is, the, is that social. Um, you, you know, if you refuse to assist them, they're still going to build anyway. Mm. Yeah, mm. so I don't know. So, I so, think so, it's being between a rock and a hard place. What so, do you do? So basically what we are saying, the expertise is there. Very, uh, very qualified sound. engineers, very qualified hydrologists, very qualified uh, planners. What we require is coordinating all these experts from the county, from the national government, uh, from uh, all, all these organizations, and you coordinate them. And the political goodwill. The political goodwill. Actually, that is the greatest engineer we have in mm. this country. So what needs because to happen? The, yeah. the, 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 the politician, once he says, do it that way, everybody will fall, we'll fall in line. Yeah. So what needs to happen today? Because here we are in a situation that is dire right there okay. are folks today whose houses have not been flooded in but, but with the heavy rains that we are told will happen for the next two weeks yeah. they could be possible uh, victims let me let me and try to respond and there to are that people huh? who have had to leave their homes don't know when they'll come back destruction has taken place what needs to happen today is there a, is there a solution for now okay now what happens after every infrastructure after every development has been done we have what we call s build drawings s build drawings is that you had this plan but uh because of some reasons you build this way now you we want you to give us the drawings of what you did mm -hmm. the situation we are right now i'm not sure what the developer said or what the what was approved and what has been done my thought of the immediate uh what to do immediately would actually to have an assessment of the whole of our drainage system of the whole of our infrastructure system before the rains are over mm -hmm. so that we know which areas are flooded we do what we call a flood risk assessment during the floods mm -hmm. because you know sometimes we we assume that this was supposed to be done and it didn't happen so the immediate thing that should be done is actually get professionals to go and assess what is happening the areas that is happening we may not do too much of it now. I mean, um, beyond that, we may not do. But during the next rains, eh, at least we'll have information that will protect us from um, from that. I think that, to me, should be. And the next thing, I saw the government formed what is called a multi-agency multi 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 yes. emergency. I don't know yeah. who is in that committee. I don't know which professionals are in that committee, but they need to be there. How long because would an assessment of the drainage systems take? Okay, let's because I also think that a lot of the decisions, and I think it's been proven world over, that a lot of decisions that are taken for mitigation should actually be informed by data. Absolutely, absolutely. they That's should be exactly informed by information. And there's no better time to take data than when it's happening. Okay, so how long would that take? 
it depends on how many professionals you want to involve. If you involve all the engineers, it could take probably a week before the rains are over. Okay. We we'll probably be done. It in, could. In the whatever. It okay. could be done. It depends on on what yeah. what resources people are ready to put in place. Uh, uh, the, the, the greatest challenge now we say we want to involve engineers. You have to procure them. You have to pay them. The procurement takes maybe another three We don't have months. money. We don't, we don't, have, don't money. have money. We, we don't have time. Doctors, and no. then by the time now you put the team in place, there's no rain to check, to map, or the, uh, you, have, you cannot assess real, real actually, time. actually, when the rain stops, that is perhaps the best time. Because, as you say correctly, water will go wherever it will, and it leaves a trail of destruction. You can tell. But even before that, you know. Because when you talk of planners, when you talk of all these professionals, they know everything we're talking about here it is understood you know the pathways that water follows the reason why you bring you build what you call storm water draining is because you understand that when water collates at a certain point this is where it will be channeled towards all these things are known but I, I don't think that is a problem we that has been done what what other buildings what other development has happened along that because it's it's not just yes. what the yes. drainage can carry. Mm. Look, what is what is feeding that drainage? Yes, and we, that's we, what we need to know. We, we were with her with the city council. Mm. We were in charge of uh, Kayole mm. Umoja, which was uh, actually funded by the World Bank, and the experts were experts were the Mutiso Menezes were joint consulting Ajay. engineers. The engineers we did our day up to a limit where the riparian actually we developed up to that and we put the sewers downstream. In 1990. 293 mm. uh, people were moved from so so well from from uh, the bus station there and they were taken to those valleys by the then political uh, establishment and allocated plots uh, and, uh, and allocated plots by the chiefs by uh, the councillors everybody was there along the whole of that uh, valley now there are houses high structures which are, and they have already now blocked what had been planned by the engineers so uh, you, then that is why I was saying the political engineer is very powerful. <laughs> uh, we could not tell them not to. I was in, in charge there. When I said that things are going to be to go wrong there, they s went back to the president and told him there is an engineer who is actually um, uh, blocking, uh, blocking, Bl blocking develop this, this de development. development. Mm. I was transferred from uh, Kayole, Kayole to Madari. <laughs> then I resigned out of those frustrations and I mm. went to consultancy. So you can see how it goes. So it's short, of, that, yeah, yeah, they, short they, of an assessment being done today yeah. uh, over the next one week, what we're saying essentially <laughs> is that we're likely to see more destruction happen. Kenya Met has been unequivocal in what they've been saying for the last four months in terms of what is going to happen with the rain. This, this, this by the way, should not come as any surprise in terms of the uh, high levels of rain that we are seeing. It shouldn't come as any surprise to anybody because they have early warning systems are in place and they work very well. Again, decisions informed by data and information. Um, they've also told us that it will continue for the, for, for the, next, for the next two, three weeks. That The height of it will come at the end of April, beginning of May. So it's, it's not even as bad as it is going to get. So we're saying short of this assessment, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, stuck in the same place. Uh, is that what we're saying? I, 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 no, I, sorry, I can understand what she's saying. I, actually, what should happen now, that uh, disaster uh, Im emergency committee should actually be in full, sw uh, full swing now. We don't wait for only for giving uh, uh, food and such. We get to the ground with the technical uh, Team. teams now assessing and with the, with the press also because the press also is all going to be uh, to, to actually assist so much in informing we, we assess this is what is happening around the around mukuru for this time uh, and then we coordinate with the meteorological department we know where it's going to be worse and as i said it has not happened it's good uh, buildings have not collapsed they are going to collapse uh, 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 sorry god forbid because if we have large slides because yeah, of the true. wet ground conditions some of those buildings which have been then been collapsing during the dry season are going to collapse and then we are going to have more disaster to manage because we never followed the instructions from the word go we shall be sorry at the end of it we have to be firm and the, the, uh, everyone has to be uh, to, to be very serious. We have to be hard. We don't want to be called good. Mm. 
Let us get the police and everybody give support. This building should be demolished immediately. And we don't care where take us to the court and wherever. Otherwise, we have to clear from these valleys. We don't want to start crying for mm. uh, when the damage has been done. Right. There was a pipeline which actually got fire mm. there. I think Mukul mm. Kwanjenga. We lost over 100 uh, lives. So, yeah. Right. And people could see, experts could see, people are settling on a pipeline. So coming in from you, Engineer Jane? Yes, uh, I was going to say... the. Um, it is first of all very unfortunate. I think that's why I should have started from that mm. we have lost a life. You know, one life lost because of floods is actually one life too many. Too so many. that is uh, really unfortunate. We should do what it is we can as the as engineers and uh, our umbrella body is called the Institution of Engineers of Kenya. The little that we can do. I know the president, Engineer Shama, has started uh, a fund for disaster matter for just disaster support. It's mm -hmm. not much. We cannot do much. But uh, at least that will, you know, we need to sympathize and em em empathize with our brothers and sisters who are that. So that's the first thing we can do. But please involve engineers. We are here. You trained us. We were, you know, we went to the good universities mm. and we, are, we did the good course and we did what we can. Just use us. Use our expertise. When we give, when you give advice, it's not, it's, it's not, we are not just talking. Mm. It is actually informed information. So mm. I think that should be used. That should be uh, taken into account and use the information that we need. Mm. And involve us in this disaster uh, response. Please involve engineers. Yeah. Indeed. And, and, and and the conversations must continue. Running yeah. out of time, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's sad that we, we have to speak about it even when the situation is so bad. But I think we, we cannot stop like both of you have said. We have to thank you for being here this morning, at least to shed some light on some of these issues and that we can continue continue talking about them because we always say when you talk about something two things happen one somebody talks about it in circles where something can be done or two something will actually be done and those are the two things that we hope will continue to happen um, engineer jane mutilili is the chairperson of the association of consulting engineers of kenya and engineer francis karemi is a registered water professional and lead expert in environment assessment and audit thank you so much for being here this morning good morning this is the situation room the only way to start your day.